All right, Kevin, thank you. It is Thursday, so we're getting down to business with Cosmo Macero of O'Neill and Associates. Cosmo, great to see you. Hey, Sarah, how are you? I am doing great. So it started Excellent. out as a great day for the markets. The Dow was almost at an all-time high, but then dropped about 20 uh, points at closing. Do you think this looming sequester deadline had something to do with it? You know, I'm not so sure about that, Sarah. The markets have actually been surging for several months. It had been several days of increases. The Federal Reserve says they're going to keep interest rates low. Consumer spending is still high. Corporate earnings have been good. These are all good fundamentals that have led to the market's increase. So I'm not really sure there's a connection there. And if you take sequester and look at it, well, we have a huge nas national debt problem. These are major budget, budget cuts. You might look at that as an investor and say, hey, you know what? That's not so bad. Reality is there's going to be pretty significant impact, however, nationwide because of these cuts. Right. Well, this is what I wanted to ask you. If Washington doesn't have a compromise by tomorrow for the sequester, what does that mean for us here in Massachusetts? Are we talking about dire economic consequences? Uh, nationwide, about $85 billion in cuts gradually coming in over several months. Everything from military spending to uh, funding for national parks, disaster relief, uh, unemployment benefits, particularly in Massachusetts, public health funding will take a big hit to the tune of about $2.5 million, programs addressing viol against, violence against women. And, you know, in our economy here in Massachusetts, because we rely on higher education and health care funding and research funded by the Department of Defense that's going to be in the institutes of health. That's going to be a major impact here in Massachusetts. All right, changing uh, gears just a little bit here uh, quickly. Massachusetts Department of Transportation uh, scheduled to start open road tolling. Uh, it's going to start in the Tobin Bridge later this year. Again, what does this mean for us? Will it save us money? Technology has been around for a while, Sarah, and. 1960s toll booths, it's the, the idea is let's, let's remove all that staffing that's very costly, put that easy pass technology into effect along the roads, estimated savings about $50 million a year. Problem is, there's serious negotiations that have to happen with the unions representing toll collectors. They're kind of in an impasse right now because it's unclear what happens to those jobs. Uh, the state says they may help them with outplacement to private sector jobs, maybe put them somewhere else in the Department of uh, Transportation. But that's unclear, and that's going to be a big issue uh, and pot potentially an obstacle. Yeah, you got to think that those uh, men and women are feeling a little bit nervous about that. They certainly are. And you can count on this. If, if and when this goes through, you're looking at I-95, I-90, 84, 91, potentially having tolls added to there that's going to impact you and me as, uh, as commuters. All right. Cosmo Macero, great to have you on again. We'll see you soon. All right, Sarah.